everybody and welcome to Chef's Baking Blog. The recipe today is going to be for a deep filled uh, minced beef pie and it's going to have minced beef and vegetables in basically uh, and it's going to be quite thick. I'm going to do it in an 8 inch square, 20 centimeter square um, pan but it will fit perfectly well as uh, also in a uh, a nine inch pie dish, uh, no, a round pie dish. So you can do it in that as well if you want to. Now the reason I've said the recipe as opposed to what I'm baking today is that I'm doing this over two days. Today I'm going to uh, make the, the filling and then I'm going to cool that down and chill it so that it becomes nice and thick, um, ready for me to make the pastry and uh, put the pastry in the pan and fill it and bake it. So I'll do the filling today and the pastry and the baking tomorrow. So um, it's actually not a difficult recipe but it takes a time because I'm going to cook the filling slowly over a low heat for at least two hours. That's to get all the flavours fully cooked through. So for the ingredients, and I'm only going to do the ingredients at the moment for the filling, I do the pastry dough ingredients uh, tomorrow when I'm making the pastry. So for this I have one onion which I have chopped and diced, one stick of celery chopped and diced, one carrot chopped and diced, and one large potato chopped and diced. Now the pot potato is in water at the moment, but by the time I need it I will have drained the water off and patted it dry with kitchen towel. Um, that's just to stop it from uh, discolouring. I have 500 grams, 1.1 pounds of minced beef. I also have 100 grams, 3.5 ounces of bacon. Um, you could use bacon lardons, but I'm just using um, some uh, bacon, which I've cut into small pieces. I have... Uh, about 20 grams, two tablespoons of plain flour. I have 12 grams, one tablespoon of uh, sugar. I have one teaspoon of minced garlic. You could just use a garlic clove uh, crushed and chopped, chopped up finely. I have one bay leaf. I have half a teaspoon of herb de Provence or you could use mixed herbs, or you could just use half a teaspoon of dried thyme if you wanted to, and half a teaspoon of dried parsley. I also have 200 millilitres, which is half a cup plus a third of a cup of beef stock. You could use chicken stock, or you could even use vegetable stock if you wanted to. And I have uh, 60 millilitres, a quarter of a cup of red wine. In addition to that, I'm going to season it with salt and pepper, but I will taste the uh, the filling as I'm cooking it before I put the seasoning in, because stock tends to have um, salt in it as well. So that's all the ingredients, and so what we need to do is start to uh, cook off the onions and then the bacon and the mince, and then we'll assemble everything into the filling. So what I've done is I've uh, put about a tablespoon of oil into my pan and I'm just going to heat that and once that's heated I'm going to uh, reduce the heat a little bit and I'm going to saute the onions until they're um, softened and as they begin to soften I'm going to add the garlic and cook that through as well.
and as those onions are softening as I said I'm going to uh, put my garlic in as well So the onions have started to soften now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the celery, the potato and the carrot and I'm going to uh, cook those for about 10 minutes. And I just want to mention that I also have a teaspoon of Worcester sauce here which I forgot to mention in the ingredients um, that I will be adding in at some stage. So we're putting the carrots and the celery and the potato and I'm just going to let those cook stirring from time to time as well for about 10 minutes so those vegetables have now been cooking for 10 minutes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, transfer those to a bowl for the time being. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fry off the bacon and I want to cook it through you can have this crispy if you like it crispy or you can have it softer it's entirely up to you And so that's as much as I want my bacon fried. So I'm going to put that into the vegetables as well. And then I'm going to fry the beef off, but in small amounts and with no fat in the pan. I just want it to begin to colour a little bit and then I will transfer that to the vegetable bowl as well. So I've cooked off this uh, beef and I'm going to put the last piece into our bowl. And with the bacon and the um, minced beef in the bowl, I'm simply going to mix those around into the vegetables. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle over my sugar and the flour and I'm going to just toss that until it coats the vegetables. The flour will be the, the, the thickening agent basically.
as the filling cooks. So that's good like that. So then that needs to go back into the pan. You could use a large saucepan if you wanted to, but I'm going to continue to use the same pan. Um, so I'll just put the, that to one side and get the pan back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my red wine into the pan and that's going to loosen any fond that may be on the bottom of the pan because that will have flavour in it. And then I'm going to put the filling back into the pan like that and I'm going to add in my stock and mix that around and I'll put in the Worcester sauce as well and the herb de Provence and the parsley and also at this stage I'll add just a little uh, grind of pepper. I'm not going to put salt in yet, I will taste it later before I put salt in. So as you can hear probably and see that's beginning to simmer now or, or boil should I say. So I'm going to reduce the heat and I'm going to put a lid on the pan and I'm going to reduce the heat and I'm going to simmer that on a low heat for at least two hours um, and if I think that the mixture is drying out um, too quickly I will simply add a little more uh, stock into the to the mixture but I'm so I'll come back in two hours and I'll show you what the filling looks like at that stage and then uh, we'll be ready to cool that down overnight and go on to make the pie tomorrow. So I cooked uh, the pie filling uh, for two hours and um, I cooked it very gently and I stirred it so that any flour and such like didn't stick to the bottom. I didn't stir it constantly but every sort of few minutes I just gave it a quick stir and most of the liquid has now been um, absorbed in, so to speak. So, oh, and I, I didn't show putting the bay leaf in, but I did put the bay leaf. Be, I did put the bay leaf in. So I'll take that out now, and I'm going to put this into a container, and I'm simply going to leave it to go cold, and then I'm going to put it in the fridge and leave it overnight and that will um, be perfect to go into our pastry when that's made tomorrow. So that's all, the, all there is to that. I'll leave it to cool down and once it's cooled down I'll put it in the fridge and I'll come back tomorrow. We'll make the pastry, we'll uh, chill the pastry, then we'll roll it out, we'll fill it with this cold filling put the top on and we'll bake it. So it's now the following day and my uh, minced beef filling is still in the fridge um, 
and it's been there overnight so it's time to go on to make the pastry and I'm going to make enough pastry to fill this 8 inch square tin which is about 2 inches deep and 8 inches across the base but as I said uh, yesterday a 9 inch pie dish is the same uh, area basically so you could use a 9 inch pie dish and have a pie just the same this will be a square one so I go on to the ingredients for the uh, pastry and I have uh, 400 grams which is two and a third cups based on scooping packed flour into a 250 milliliter cup of plain flour I have 200 grams 14 tablespoons plus one teaspoon of unsalted butter which I've cubed and it's cold I have three grams half a teaspoon of salt and I have 105 milliliters which is seven uh, tablespoons of liquid and what that is is one medium egg or large in the USA uh, and then I've topped it up uh, to 105 milliliters using water and I've just swished them together so 105 milliliters seven tablespoons of uh, water and egg combined then I have one egg which I will use later as an egg wash on top of the pastry so to make the pastry I'm going to use um, the processor bowl of my immersion blender and I'm simply going to put the flour and the salt in there and I should say if you wanted to use half butter and half lard you could do that as well or you could even use all lard I suppose so I'm simply going to drop the butter in and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir to coat um, the butter in the flour before I start to process it I'm just going to toss that around like that this is only for my benefit so that um, the cubes stay separate as they break down so that's good like that and I'm going to process this or pulse it repeatedly until it uh, turns into a fine breadcrumb like texture or coarse sand and that's good like that it's uh, quite fine now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in most of my egg and water but I'm going to retain just a little bit um, I just want to process this until it starts to clump together into a dough so I've, I've held back maybe a tablespoon I may have to put that in later So I simply pulse this until it clumps together. And that is beginning to clump together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip that out into a bowl. Then I can judge whether it needs the remaining liquid or not. So I'm just going to squeeze that together and immediately I can feel that that's good like that it doesn't need any more liquid in it at all so I'm going to shape that into a dough that I can wrap in some plastic wrap to chill in the fridge And that's good like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
wrap that in the plastic like that and I'm going to put that in the fridge and I'm going to chill it for about 45 minutes and once uh, that time is up I'm going to divide it into two pieces and uh, I need slightly more for the bottom than the top so my dough weighs 730 grams so what I will do is I will take uh, probably 450 grams for the bottom and use the remaining 281 grams for the top of the the, um, the pie. So I'll divide that into those two pieces when I come back and we'll roll it out and fill uh, our pan with the pastry. We'll put the beef, minced beef filling in, put the top on, egg wash it, and then we'll chill it again while the oven's preheating, uh, ready to bake. So I've chilled my dough now and I'm going to roll it out uh, and I've divided it into the two pieces so I'm going to roll out the 450 grams to about 12 inches by 12 inches so I've put it onto a, a floured work surface and I'm simply going to roll it out until I get um, to those dimensions that will be large enough to fill the base of my eight inch square pan. So that's rolled out large enough and I'm going to just roll that up onto my rolling pin and I'm going to place it into the pan. Now, as you see with my pan, I have put some parchment paper in. You don't need to do that. The reason I've done it is that I want to lift the the pie out so that I can show it to you in its entirety but if you're making it for yourself you can just uh, bake the pie in the tin and serve it from straight from the tin so I'm going to carefully lay this over the pan and I'm going to lift it so that I can drop it down into and if it cracks it doesn't matter you can patch it but I'm going to press down into the edges like that. That's good. So then I'll put that to one side and I'll roll out the remaining pastry to um, slightly larger than 8 by 8 inches. So that's rolled out large enough and I'm going to roll that up and put it back onto the plastic wrap for a, a while while we fill the, the base with our pie filling. So I have my pie filling here and it's, it's set nice and thick now as you can see and I'm just going to spread that over the base and that's good like that. So then we need to do our um, top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
break my egg for the egg wash. And I'm just going to break that up a little bit with a fork and with a pinch of salt. That helps to break it up. And that's good like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just brush around the edge the inside edge with some of the egg. This is just to help the pastry adhere. Like that. And then I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to trim off some of the excess pastry. I'm going to patch that one there. And then I'm going to lay the other piece of dough over the top. Like that. And that's good. And then I'm going to press it down like that and then I'm just going to turn the edge over like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply make a pattern and you can do this any way you want but I'm going to do it like this two fingers and push one finger in between them Just like that and then the final thing at the moment is to brush the surface 
and the rim with the beaten egg. like that and then I'm going to make some slits in the middle or on the top should I say and this is to allow the air and steam to come out during baking And I'm then going to put that into the fridge while I preheat my oven to 200 degrees Celsius. That's 180 Celsius with a fan, 400 Fahrenheit. And at the same time as that's preheating, I'm going to put a baking tray in the oven so that that gets very hot as well. That will jump start the uh, baking, the underside of the pastry when it goes into the oven. So my oven is preheated now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush egg on the top once more like that and I'm going to put that into the oven and I'm going to bake it on the baking tray for 35 to 45 minutes probably more like 45 minutes I'll test the internal temperature of the meat to make sure that it's cooked through or heated through should I say it's already cooked and I'll leave it uh, in the tin for five minutes then I'll take it out of the tin um, and transfer it to a board uh, so that I can then show you what the pie looks like uh, completely once I've cut it open so I'll be back with you once this is uh, baked and ready to serve I baked the deep filled minced, uh, minced beef pie for 45 minutes and I tested the temperature and it was up to about 82 uh, Celsius so clearly hot enough inside and uh, so I took it out of the oven I left it for a few minutes then I transferred it onto a wire rack and I've cut a, a piece off so this is what the pie looks like baked and this inside you can see the a nice deep filling and it's baked very very well so um, I'm just going to have a taste of the pie and then I'll get on and eat the, the rest of my dinner. Don't want too big piece. Mm. tastes really really good the the broth the, sorry the beef stock with uh, the red wine and the garlic and the herbs really do give it a wonderful flavor and uh, this is perfect I mean this will serve six people at least or four people if they've got big appetites and I should say although I cooked my meat yesterday and chilled it overnight you can do it all in one day if you want to 
It's just that you do need to leave time for the meat to cool and then chill before you fill the pie. And uh, just remember, as I said, this goes quite well in a, a nine inch round pie dish as well. So if, you, if that's what you've got, you can use that. So I hope you've enjoyed the recipe. And if you have, please give me the thumbs up below and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an I that you can click on and that will take you to a link for the recipe. And I'll put a link below the video as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.